Hello everyone. Welcome to the course on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Data Flow Service. I'm Karthik Hegde and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Product Management Team. Here is a safe harbor statement from Oracle. In today's course, we will see what this data flow actually means. We'll go through the high level overview of the data flow. We'll also discuss why is data flow required. We will also discuss some of the key terminologies related to the data flow service. We will figure out where does data flow fits into the bigger picture. We will go through some of the common use cases related to the data flow. And finally, we will wrap it up with a quick review session. So what is data flow? Data flow is a fully managed Spark service. It means it's a platform as a service with zero administrative overhead. What it does it, it allows the developers to focus on the code or applications without having to worry about the underlying infrastructure or cluster provisioning or software installation. They can simply import and run their existing Spark applications from EMR, Databricks or Hadoop system. It's also a pay as you go service and it's an elastic big data service. So as I already said, it allows the developers to focus on their application code and provides an easy runtime environment for them to execute the jobs. It also gives you an easy and simple user interface with API support for integration and application and other workflows. So let's look at the high level overview of the OCI data flow service. As you can see in the diagram here, you have your Spark application or the raw data in the bottom layer, which you then bring it into the object storage. Object storage, as I already said, is a native service from the OCI. So on top of that is the data flow service, which is basically a Spark on-demand service, which picks up the data, which is stored in the object storage, picks up the application ready to run, which is also stored in the object storage and runs the job. And finally, once it finishes running the job and has the process data, it puts back the data back into the object storage for you to review and look into the logs. So why do we need data flow service? Now data flow service provides cloud native security. What I mean by that is you can read and write the data directly from the native service such as OCI's object storage. You don't need any credentials to access the object storage. You can simply make use of OCI's native IAM policies to control who can access the Spark applications, who can access the operational UIs or logs or outputs. So it gives you that basic cloud native security. It also gives you a consolidated insight into the operations. You can sort and filter the biggest jobs. You can also see which job is consuming the most. You can also see which jobs are running too long and you can go ahead and stop those jobs. In addition to this, you can also do troubleshooting using OCI data flow. It gives you a consolidated Spark UI and logs in a single place. And finally, you can also manage your output using a UI or REST APIs. All the output is securely captured in a single place. And finally, you can also publish your apps to the business. So what, what do we mean by that is developers can publish the job templates. Uh, we'll also discuss what actually these job templates mean. Now, once the developers have published these job templates, uh, non-technical users can easily benefit from these jobs and they can run the jobs as well. So in overall, it provides you with the native security. It provides you with an operational insight. You can do troubleshooting and manage your output and publish your apps to the business. Now moving forward, let's look at some of the key terminologies associated with data flow. First one is data flow applications. Data flow applications are reusable application templates. Now these templates have code, they have the application code, they have dependencies, default parameters and default runtime resource specifications. The next is data flow library. The data flow library, you can think it of as a central repository. Now this repository has a data flow applications and anybody can come here and browse, search and execute those applications 
through the library. And finally, there is an the elastic compute. The data flow allocates the VMs, it runs the jobs, it securely captures outputs and shuts down the clutter, cluster once the application has completed running its job. Now you don't have to worry about spinning up the compute instances by yourself because since it's a platform as a service, data flow takes care of that part. And then you have Spark application. Spark applications basically uses the Spark API to do distributed processing. And finally, you have the Spark UI itself, which is basically included with the Apache Spark. And it's an important tool for you to debug and diagnose your Spark applications. Also, you can get some status details on the Spark UI page as well. Now let's see where does OCI data flow fits in in the bigger picture. Now the Oracle provides the entire suite of different layers for you to perform different tasks with respect to your data. Now going back to the down from the bottom up, the bottom layer is OCI's identity and access management for you to secure your data. You can also make sure who has the access to certain jobs and who has access to certain resources. So this is the, the bottommost part. Then you have the infrastructure layer where uh, the storage is the elastic storage which, where you can keep your Spark applications as well as the data. Mostly we're going to use the OCI object storage here. And then you have the elastic compute where which scales up and scales down based on the need and the jobs required to run. Again, it's not required for a developer to spin up the compute instances since a uh, Spark uh, OCI data flow manages that. Then you also have the administration control where you can limit the usages. You can also give the access policies. And finally, you have the user, user layer where the application developers can worry about their code, packaging their codes dependencies and run their code as much as as many times as they want. They also have the library where they can publish their uh, Spark templates and it allows you to run your job, jobs on the fly and access the UI for uh, debugging and troubleshooting. So this is where OCI data flow combining with other different layers gives you the overall bigger picture of the end-to-end -end stack. Now moving forward, let's discuss some of the common use cases as to wherein you would use the OCI data flow. Uh, one of the use cases is ETL offload. Uh, so imagine if you are using a premium data warehouse capacity and uh, you have unstructured data sets that are sitting there and you want to query them. So one of the ways to, to do this is to simply offload all your ETL data and unstructured data uh, to the data lake or into the object storage in this case. So then on top of that, you can run Spark based ETL using the data flow. So this is one of the important use case that you can use data for data flow for. The next one is active archive. So if you're deleting some of the valuable data from your databases, because since it's very expensive to keep them, what you could do is you can just simply move them to the object storage instead. And then you can run some analytics and do a query based on spark based queries on OCI data flow. So in this way, you're both reducing the cost and also making sure that you're not deleting your data and making use of your data. And the last use case is to run your bursty work workloads. So some of the uh, workloads that you don't run too often ever as, and you run on, once in a day or a week or a month, instead of providing some fixed cap capacity to run these jobs, you can run bursty jobs in data flow for lower overall cost. So let's discuss some of the things that we already saw and let's do a review of those topics. So as we already discussed, it's a OCI data flow is a serverless system. It means you can focus on your Spark, Go, Spark code and nothing else. It provides you with simple operations and tuning. It's great for batch processing. It gives you a consolidated control. It also provides you with a Spark UI for you to manage your logs and state, run status of the jobs. With that, we have come to the end of the session. 
uh, if you want to access the Orkut Cloud's free tier, here is the link. You can also take trainings as well as certifications with the uh, links given here. There are also OCR hands-on labs for you to go through the step-by-step -step process. And this video is also available on OCI Learning Library on OCI Learning Library YouTube. Finally, we have come to the end of the session. Thank you for everyone joining.